I'd like to start by thanking uh, Penny for organizing this and uh, being so gracious as to invite me and thank the organizers of uh, uh, ECO. It's uh, amazing how they bring this together. Uh, my disclosures are here, uh, professional consulting fees as well as personal biases that I hold that I think are important to acknowledge. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, grant support uh, to the OAC to be able to do this research from Novo Nordisk and the very valuable uh, collaboration and contribution that uh, contributions of these people uh, uh, listed here who uh, helped make this possible. Uh, a little bit of background. Uh, first, competing narratives uh, affect our ideas about uh, obesity uh, interventions and uh, how we approach the problem. Uh, Paul Thibodeau uh, did some research on prevalent, uh, prevalent narratives about obesity and came up with four that seemed to be dominant. One of a, uh, of a moral failure, a disgusting failure of personal responsibility, one of addiction, people getting hooked on junk food, uh, a toxic environment with too much healthy food and, uh, and impossibility of exercise, and then a medical narrative that says we are blaming not helping people with this condition. Uh, Pervasive bias is important because it hampers clinical care and obesity-related policy. Uh, blaming people with, a, with obesity gets in the way of, of clinical care, sets up a uh, dysfunctional medical dialogue. And uh, some of the key elements of bias against people with obesity that were factored into the uh, attitudes that uh, we assessed include blame directed at people with obesity, assumptions that people with obesity are lazy or lack discipline, and then the social rejection of uh, people with obesity. I wouldn't be comfortable if someone with obesity were to marry one of my close relatives. I would not be comfortable hiring somebody with obesity, even in countries where that's illegal. Uh, those, are, those are key elements that we looked at. And so we have this ongoing study of biases about obesity and people living with it. We are collecting data on public attitudes in Australia, in Australia Brazilia, Brazil, Canada, both English-speaking and French-speaking Canadians, uh, we sampled them separately, Germany, Italy, Mexico, Sweden, the UK, and the US. We assess agreement with uh, different narratives. We assess uh, agreement with explicit beliefs about people with obesity. And we look for potential differences among the countries that we surveyed. And, and we're also hoping to monitor trends. I don't have any data on trends here. In terms of methods, we used web and smartphone samples obtained via Google surveys. Uh, we sampled, a, we got responses from a total of more than 90,000 uh, respondents. And uh, that number is high because we only ask people to answer one question each. When you're asking questions about sensitive subjects, uh, people get fatigued very, very quickly and start giving you dishonest answers. Uh, and so that's, that's not good. Uh, if you've ever gone onto a website that interrupted you and said, if you want to keep reading this website, uh, answer a quick question for us, please, uh, that's exactly how we collected the data. Uh, as I mentioned, each respondent answered only one question. We had 18 of the questions. We gave them five-point Likert scales, uh, asking their agreement with these four different narratives about obesity, uh, asking questions about blame, social acceptance, laziness, and self-discipline of uh, people with obesity. And we got a minimum of 500 respondents for each question in each country and language that we uh, assessed. So, four results, and uh, I have seven minutes left, so I'm going to be fairly brief about this. Uh, in terms of an overall response that just jumped out at us, people across the world, and this relates to the uh, presentation that uh, Dr. Speakman just gave, really favor the idea that addiction is an explanation for obesity. In Italy, it was 70% uh, of the public said that obesity is a problem of addictive junk food. The US had the least agreement with that, but even so, 
uh, 39% of Americans said that this is a problem that has its roots in addictive junk food, and only 30% disagreed with that idea. We had 31% sitting there in the middle saying, eh, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. <clears throat> This is uh, th this analysis of odds ratios for the for agreement with the addiction narrative comes from a cumulative uh, logic model that uh, Krista Watts at the U.S. Military Academy developed for us, and uh, the U.S. is the reference uh, index uh, for this analysis. And what this shows you uh, is, along with other analyses that we did. We found that the agreement with that addiction explanation was especially strong in Brazil, among French-speaking Canadians, and in Italy. Uh, you see there, Brazil is a, uh, respondents from Brazil were about three times more likely to tell us that uh, it's a problem of addiction than uh, respondents in the U.S. Uh, it, it, respondents in Italy likewise uh, responded uh, very much in favor of that. And we single out French-speaking Canadians here, even though they scored a little bit, although not significantly less likely to say that it's a problem. Because uh, when you compare that to how they agreed with the other narratives, uh, it came out uh, as more important. They agreed more with that narrative than with the other narratives. And likewise, Mexico, although they agreed with this narrative a lot. They agreed with all the other narratives. They were quite an agreeable sample. <laughs> and, and so uh, y we were really looking for you know, what stood head and shoulders above, and it was in those three countries where it was particularly strong. Only in the US and the UK did respondents believe in the narrative of irresponsibility, a disgusting failure of personal responsibility as the explanation for obesity as much as they believed in the other explanations. You can see here that uh, it was on par. Uh, in, in this particular graph, the uh, baseline uh, is how much they agreed with irresponsibility. Uh, they agreed no more with addiction or with the uh, uh, environmental nar narrative. And they said that this uh, medical narrative, at least in the UK, they said it, th that uh, that medical narrative is nonsense. They, they, uh, they relatively speaking, rejected that. Uh, likewise, in the US, they said these are all alike. So uh, those are the places where people were really thinking, this is very much a, a, a problem of personal responsibility. Now. Across all measures, and, and here I'm, I have the aggregate measure on blame. We asked blame several different ways, and we aggregated it. Uh, the U.S. is the uh, reference, uh, reference baseline. Uh, you see that uh, uh, respondents in the U.K. and Mexico and Australia were more likely to blame uh, people with obesity. But then when you go across all of the other measures, and unfortunately in just three minutes left, I can't show you all 18 uh, measures, but across all measures, the UK always came up in the top tier of harsh beliefs about people with obesity, and I would include in that their response to the idea of obesity being the result of a disgusting failure of personal responsibility. So. In summary, and it looks like I'm going to leave you with a few extra minutes here, I was, Penny put the fear of God in us. So uh, I'm happy to answer your questions. But we saw that public beliefs related to weight bias were really uh, varied among these, uh, these nine different populations that we studied. We found that uh, belief in addictive junk food, even though scientifically that's still a matter of controversy, belief in addictive junk food causing obesity is very strong really everywhere we looked. Some places stronger than other, but, uh, others, but everywhere we went, people said, yeah, that, that makes sense to me. I, I believe that. It's all that addictive junk food that's, uh, that's killing us. Um, that belief was especially strong in Italy and, and, and French-speaking uh, Canada. Uh, we also found that the harshest beliefs about uh, people with obesity were in the UK, and some of the least harsh beliefs were found among French-speaking Canadians. Again, 
here I'm speaking about the overall pattern of responses and not just a single response. Uh, on, on just about every measure, the, the UK came up at the very top of harshness. So uh, if you happen to want these slides, you can download them at this, uh, at this link and find more information uh, at, at Conscient Health, and I'm happy uh, for any questions that you might have. Questions? Okay. Give you back some time. <laughs>